So I got this prednisone warrior question about hair loss from prednisone. And here's the question. She said, thank you so much for all your advice regarding prednisone over the last two months. It really has been helpful. Unfortunately, I have COPD and although it is under control for the most part, I have had to take short courses of prednisone, 30 to 35 milligrams a day for five days, once or twice a year for the past seven or so years. All was fine until 2021 when I experienced severe hair loss about a month after a course of prednisone. The hair began growing again for about eight months, but then began to fall out again after I had to take another short course of cortisone. This second bout of hair loss has not stopped since July last year, despite not taking any more prednisone. At one stage, I began to notice tiny regrowth, but this too quickly fell out within the month. Since I haven't been taking prednisone, I've been a complete loss at the reason for this, and then thought of the inhaler that I use once a day. I'm using Cyclovent 160 and am on 320 micrograms per day. Could this be the reason for the hair loss? Also, have you any idea why hair loss is only occurring now after all the years of taking prednisone and Cyclovent with no side effects? Or do you think the hair loss is not connected to the prednisone? I had all the usual blood tests for hair loss, thyroid, iron, and etc., and all were negative. And one more question. I live in South Africa. Is neutronized zone available here? I haven't been able to find it. Thank you, Dr. Megan. I really appreciate all your advice and time. Okay. So this question is great. Let's go back to the question of whether cyclovent can cause hair loss, because that is the question. There's not a great amount of evidence about prednisone causing hair loss. I personally had it, and I've talked to lots of people who have. And it is listed as a side effect on clinical pharmacology, the most premier medical drug reference. It's there, but five other drug reference websites did not include alopecia, which is the medical name for hair loss. So yes, it is a side effect, but it is not one that is common and it is not listed very often. Is it a side effect of other drugs that are not pills? Like We've established that it's probably a side effect of prednisone, but when I look through PubMed and I, I typed in prednisone alopecia adverse effect, nothing comes up except talking about how prednisone is a drug that treats alopecia (laughs) because there's a type of alopecia hair loss that is autoimmune. And so we give prednisone an autoimmune suppressant and it helps they, those people grow their hair back. Totally different story. But I did find an inhaled corticosteroid, which is what cyclovent is, causing alopecia as an adverse effect. There's one article, one, and this is back in 2006 in the Netherlands. And this is what it said. Since 1984, severe adverse drug events of inhaled corticosteroids were reported in 89 children. 48 were boys. Suspected drugs were fluticasone in 46 children, budesonide in 21, beclomethazone in 22 cases. I think that's what you're taking. So of those psychiatric symptoms in 19 children, growth retardation, that means they didn't, weren't able to grow in six children, rashes in six cases, seven reports of teeth issues, and here we are, four reports of alopecia. And while we're at it, three reports of hirsutism. So alopecia is the hair loss, hirsutism is hair growth, <laughs> and hypertrichosis, that's also hair issues. So prednisone clearly affects hair, cyclovent and baclomethazone and these other inhaled corticosteroids are affecting hair. Like it's going back to 1984 when they started collecting this information. So it's really rare. Like it doesn't happen often, but I finally found a study that does show it. So that is great news, evidence that this happens. So yes, prednisone and inhaled corticosteroids can cause it. You asked about, does it cause it? Yes, it does. And you started getting the hair loss in 2021 and then it began to fall out again. Yes, it's hard because it can be triggering changes in your hair growth cycle. And I don't fully comprehend this because I'm not a dermatologist. This is not my specialty, but I've been asked about it so much that I've been learning a lot. And you had this tiny regrowth, which is great news, but now you're having the loss again. And they have a medical term for this. One prednisone warrior told me her doctor diagnosed her with telogen effluvium, 
a medical diagnosis that explains the temporary loss of hair three to six months after a stressful event. Because prednisone itself is pretty stressful, so what you are experiencing could be telogen effluvium, and it's just something that happens, and you're constantly dealing with the stress of having COPD and having to take prednisone, and so that combination of those things could be the continuing that hair loss. But then again, I'm not a dermatologist, so definitely talk to dermatologist, talk to a new dermatologist. Hair loss is awful. I mean, I lost a third of mine. I was actually pretty grateful, but it's okay. I definitely recommend talking to a doctor. And then here's some things you can possibly do. Do whatever you can to get that COPD under control. Decrease your inflammation, drink lots of water, eat foods that are high in omega-3s, high in vitamin C, like organic free-range eggs, and take supplements. And these are the supplements you could do. Something that has biotin in it like a high quality prenatal vitamin and then neutronized zone is going to replenish the nutrients that prednisone and cyclovent are stealing from your body. So neutronized zone is amazing. I'm Dr. Megan, your prednisone pharmacist. And I want to make sure that it is clear that this is a general health information. It is not medical advice and talk to your doctor for specific medical information regarding your health. I can only give you information based on the small amount of information you shared with me. And so definitely your doctor can give clearer information because they have a much bigger pile of information to choose from and medical training. I'm not a dermatologist. So I'm just sharing with you based on the science of prednisone and what I have observed in my own life. So hope that helps and signing off as Dr. Megan, your prednisone pharmacist.